the database also started in 2018 when we decided to reach out to museums. Um, up to today, we have uh, contacted 40 museums worldwide. And out of this, these 40, we have around 30 who re, um, uh, reacted positively and who handed in their data. And of course, it was a very difficult undertaking because we didn't know at all how the museums would react. And back then, we were also not sure if they would at, at all give some information. So I'm happy that um, today we have, for example, from all the German museums, um, we received the information about the Kenyan objects that they store. And um, with, together with the colleagues from the National Museum in uh, Nairobi, who is uh, George Schuma Ondeng, Lydia, Lydia Nafula, and Philemon Yamanga, we reached out to, dif to different museums worldwide. And uh, it, it's, yeah, it's just uh, nice to see that data, data comes in. And it was a real challenge to organize these data. Um, from the NAS Collective, um, I, I would take over from, from Simon and, and the NMK team in terms of taking the data and putting it into the database, um, which proved to be the kind of work that is both logistical and technical, but also had some emotional elements because then it was interesting to see this, these words and numbers that then meant that represented things that some people have really been looking for for a long time uh, and that represent maybe some, some difficult histories. Um, so that was an interesting kind of place to sit and look at data as representing human activity or human history. Um, one of the interesting things about working on the database was seeing how much um, how much work was needed beyond translating, but also at looking at the ways that communities were named, for instance, using names that are no longer in effect, or maybe have become derogatory, or maybe for tribes that don't exist anymore because they were kind of um, um, cut across by the colonial borders, or maybe even kind of married into non-existence. Um, so that was interesting. It was also interesting to look at kind, what kind of things were collected by what kind of collectors, uh, how the interests of, of, of people based on what, what their expertise was or what their profession was kind of influenced their collecting and their aesthetics. Uh, that was also quite interesting to see. I think one of the, the largest, the most important thing that I learned is that um, this question of capacity, which is a question that has been often raised in the question of object movement, um, that there is some things to unpack there because is it possible for uh, European institutions to be to have more capacity to understand uh, this data about African people? Uh, that's a question that maybe is interesting to unpack uh, whenever the question of capacity comes up uh, in these conversations. Um, and so after, two years of, of working on this database, it's now time for us to kind of make it public, which is an interesting um, thing to witness, uh, both because we know that there are people who are eagerly waiting to see the database and interact with it from, for all, result, all kinds of reasons and all kinds of uh, intentions. And that will be interesting to see it lay out, but it's also, um, it's also, a moment for this project to feel like this was the point of, of struggling for all this time to put this data together. And we hope that the, the outcome is something that's useful beyond the project and to many more people. Simon, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's really an important day um, today because it's like cutting, cutting a, a ribbon of an, an unveiling and, and, and making public uh, what we have worked on for a long, long time. And the last thing I can add is that uh, this database is, is one of a kind. I don't think this data has ever been put together in this way. So thank you. 